and <laughs> they've <laughs> he said science has ruined the moon right and what does he mean to say because before that before that what was the moon the honeymoon that beautiful moon the moon of romantic poetry the moon under which the lovers fall in love and that moon have you heard of that moon all right i have my whole life read about it enjoy it then science goes you know what ramachandra when you hear something like that you have to tell them to be quiet if it continues anyway uh, so, then they go there and say, oh, you know that moon that lovers fall in love under? And that's been the subject of so much love poetry? That beautiful moon you see, is that so inspiring? You know, it's just a bunch of dust. You know, we paid a trillion dollars to go there and we collected some rocks. There's nothing there, man. Get used to it. Right? So is that what it is? That we need to go in that direction? Guru said, all right, should we die? take the most beautiful woman and I say, hey, it's just skin, right? It's just skin stretched over uh, tissue. What are you getting so excited about? What's all of the, the sites on the internet? Well, the, don't people understand what's going on there? Objectively speaking, Shankaracharya has a verse like that. Which I'll just say some words without translation. Naristana barana nabhi desham drishtra mahavesham. You get the idea. So, uh, yes, you can't prove these things. You can't prove that the moon, doesn't the moon look beautiful tonight? You cannot prove that. So are we going to uh, eliminate all such emotions from us? We're not going to mind them. There's nothing, uh, we don't need to go in that direction. Rather, we, will, we could make another case that what our real interest is, it lies in the subjective plane. We're interested in things like beauty, affection, uh, humor, love, etc. All these things. Can, can someone prove that they love their wife? The biggest atheist, they'll still get all teary on his hand. She just helped me for so many years. I just want to dedicate this book to the little lady who stood behind. You know, why are you getting all teary eyed all about this? Don't need to do that, Mr. Atheist. Wives, well, just uh, you know, bag of X, Y, Z. Go look at the scientific analysis. Is that what we're going to do with your wife and kids? We're just going to dissect them and say, look, this is all it is. Huh? You know, stop being so emotional. Right? So you want to say you want to apply all of this type of dismissing analysis to God, but when we get on your home, you know, your favorite band you know, you're this, that, and the other thing. No, then you're all subjective about it, right? What's cool? Can you define what is cool? Right? Can you define, is there such a thing as cool? Right? Can you define it? Can it be, you know, expressed in a mat, you know, so-and-so, right? You know, the mathematical formula for cool, you know, K equals, you know. See, I noticed I used a K for all you you know, conspiratorial theorists, and you'll get that one, I know. Right. <clears throat> anyway, right? Still, you want to be cool, or you want, you know, you think you know what's cool, but can you define it? You're, when they ask Louis Armstrong, who I know, none of you know who he is. You can do a Google search, find out who he is. But way back, when the word was first in use, they asked him to define it. He said, some cats got it and some cats ain't. That was his answer. That's how he defined it. Did he know? <laughs> really, someone says, you know, they talk about the 60s, and there are, you know, what are, Silicon Valley, does Silicon Valley exist? Right. There, I've been there, there's people in San Jose right now. Our operators are standing by in San Jose, and you know what? There is no such thing as Silicon Valley. It doesn't exist. What's all the talk about? Because it's a concept. There's a you know there's a plane where it does exist, where it is meaningful, right? New York's the financial capital center. Blah blah blah. Is that, I didn't see that. I was walking down the street. I didn't see any financial center. 
I walked down Wall Street, I didn't see all that. Right? So it depends on wh what you're able to see, your angle of vision, what you're able to extract. So some man looks at a Picasso and says, I'm ready to put 100 million on the table right now. What are they seeing that compels them to do that? Someone else goes, <coughs> you know, it ain't worth the canvas it was painted on. At the British, at a modern art museum in Britain, <laughs> England, the UK, the United Kingdom. There, this is a true story. You can Google it. A janitor was cleaning up one night. And then the next day, the curator came in and says, you know, oh, where's the, uh, huh? you know, one of the, the exhibits was thrown out. Right? Because as far as the janitor was concerned, it, it was a bunch of junk. So he just like swept it up, threw it in a, what would it be called there? A, a rubbish bin, right? Rubbish. Thought was rubbish. Right? Case of Ananda will translate what I'm saying, actually. <laughs> Hilt, I, when I, would, I would used to live on the European continent, for, and I was always used to being in translation to either German or Hungarian, Czechoslovakian, Romanian, Polish, this, that, and, you know. Then every now and then I'd get to go to England, so I'd always ask for a translator. So like I'm going to speak American English and someone's going to translate it into British English. So Caseland is standing by right now, or someone in London to... Anyway, that janitor, because they say, we don't call them janitors here, you know, they'll have some other name like a hardware store. I just have to say this, like to get it out as a cathartic thing. Next to our Green Street Temple, Iron Mongery. Okay, do I have to say more? Iron Mongery for hardware store? That's, that's just, come on people. <coughs> anyway. So the janitor, he swept up the exhibit, put it in the rubber spin, and had thrown it out. Because from his angle of his vision, his perception, it was rubbish. The curator, from her, his or her angle of vision, it was something worth hanging on the wall to educate the British public and raise them all to a higher standard. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Caretakers, okay. The caretaker <laughs> tossed it in the rubbish bin. All right. Yes. Question. Uh, can you ask who is our living guru? From? Someone named Hare Krishna and the Nanda Boy. Someone from the United Kingdom is also asking this. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, we have to have some idea what is guru. Right? You ask me to identify guru. What do you mean by guru? Is guru uh, a figure, right? Um, form. <clears throat> Srila Guru Maharaj will say, According to the disciple or aspiring disciples' inner awakenment, they'll be able to recognize who is Guru. Say we see a picture of uh, a Vaishnava acting as Guru when they were very young and they looked one way and they're older, they look another way. And maybe in the spiritual world, they look in another way. How shall we recognize Guru? So we have to have uh, some <coughs> guidance from the scriptures They'll tell us, the revealed truth will say, Guru can be identified in this way. And I'm going to say a little bit more about that in a moment. I just need to save this. <clears throat> 